How's it going, guys? Welcome to Audio Addiction. We have Waste with us tonight, and uh, he can say his name and what he does. Hey, guys. I'm Waste. I am a audio engineer, sometimes a producer, but I mostly focus on being a musician and such. Awesome. So, obviously, Waste and I have been friends for a while. Uh, we've we've done we've done some stuff in the past. Um, and I feel like now he's going through kind of a rebranding, so I felt like it was a good time to have him on, and, uh, obviously I appreciate his time, uh, especially considering all the things that have been going on, but, uh, I guess, you know, the first thing is, is like, you know, what, can you tell the people what it's about, like, what's waste about, like, what do you have planned on doing? I know, like I said, you had started up doing this a little bit ago, and I now you're going through some like rebranding and stuff so um you know do you feel like you're going to take like the same uh i i want to say risk but the same sort of like thought process now or do you feel like now that you've been doing it for a little bit more like you have a different mindset now yeah when it comes to the uh the waste brand i feel like when i started off i didn't necessarily know what i was getting myself into because sure um with my old projects they just never garnered that much attention and just having this project blow up on the first song and just getting all that attention just really really surprised me it was a surreal experience and um i pretty much tried to be the extremely bubbly you know like um wholesome guy but it just it, like while most of it came from a genuine place some of it just you know uh, th let's just say the attention got to my head. Sure, and, yeah. Um, after a while, uh, just the the attention itself and just the negativity that it brought and the toxicity of the fan base itself, while I do appreciate all the people who supported me in the past and such, mm -hmm. I did have some, uh, bump, like some bumps on the road with some people just um, harassing and such just due to me either not liking an artist that they like who you know had a controversial um thing going on sure, or yeah. um when it comes to me not being available at the time for them since uh, a long time ago i also tweeted you know like if uh, you have any issues going on if you're sad if you're if you're just going through a rough patch mm -hmm. you know hit me up and i'll we can talk about it i can you know give you my two cents or just listen in and there are some people who took advantage of that because um they would basically just want my attention at that moment and i would either be you know working on music or working and i worked a really really shitty job at amazon for a while and just at that time and um my hours were crap and yeah. it's just i was going through a rough patch with money and uh with the project itself what a lot of fans don't realize is that musicians don't really make shit when it comes yeah. to um, the music <laughs> and especially as a band that that's even worse and it was just me this time and just um when it comes to the music sometimes mixing is expensive production is expensive yeah. for beats especially if you don't go for leases and it, it it just costs money to be a musician and um yeah like uh i had people just being mad at me for you know not being convenient for them and um that and a bunch of other stuff just really started to pile up and i went through like pretty much what you can call just a, a breakdown and i went on hiatus for a while mm -hmm. um a month or two later i realized that you know uh, the attention all of that can fade in just a second people forget you not everyone but just uh yeah. a lot of people and i basically had to restart twice and this is my third time going in and just uh but with this time i have a clear head i know what i want to do and i definitely don't want to be an oversaturated musician doing the um tight beats or just going for the sad music that's just very disingenuous nowadays because every kid wants to be the next nothing nowhere or the yeah. next little peep and it's yeah. just i'm tired of that i pretty much just wanted to do music for fun and um, because I'm at a comfortable place in my life right now where, um, thanks to my best friend, you know, I have a good job now, you know, uh, 
uh, like I don't want to exactly you know say what it is since I know there are some people out there who still you know want to harass me especially yeah. for that what I said about that musician oh boy and, um, <laughs> yeah so uh, while I work with amazing people now and do something that enriches my life uh, when it comes to the music I'm pretty much content with uh, you know just doing what I like and not necessarily um, going anywhere with it it's just for fun at this point it's just um i just really want to do anime style music since <laughs> it's that that's what really got me into uh music in the first place was anime like just the music itself the openings the stories pro wrestling back when wrestling was a lot more fun kind of like how it is now because uh it's kind of like the eric andre show again oh yeah that's the best i love that show and um music from video games like nobuo yomatsu's uh final fantasy uh, yeah albums. so that's the direction that waste is going in but i'm also doing a small uh metalcore project uh Ooh. on the side which is going to be uh i'd say it, it's pretty much going to delve into the myspace age back when post hardcore easy core metalcore deathcore when all these uh projects were fresh and when the styles were just really fun and i'm doing this with uh my new homies uh Vito and ultra and we already released one song called growing up there you go we're all, yeah we're gonna be rebranding the song as on uh the new project as soon as the uh song that we have currently that we're working on is finished and i gotta tell you it's definitely something that sounds like it belongs on jetix or on four <laughs> kids like in an, in an uh, opening there you go well i know waste and i have been friends for a while and you know for me it I, I know like you said you took a break and that hurt me because i like obviously like you and i i would say we we've gotten closer over the years and stuff and i know you've been a big supporter of the channel and you know i'm always as you know i'm always down to have you on and and support what you do but and i knew a lot i knew probably maybe not as much as uh I know about like the situation but I mean I just feel like for me it's like it sucks that you know unfortunately people take advantage of other people in this in this spot and you know I, I appreciate that you're being honest about it and letting people know like yeah like you know even if you are like trying to be genuine and nice you know sometimes that people can you know some people have ulterior motives and they want you to just you know they want to bring out the worst in you and I'm glad that it didn't really you know i'm glad it didn't take like a bad turn because sometimes in this case like you never know what can happen and so um i'm glad that things transpired the way that they did um but it's it's always hard it's I, it's always hard uh, particularly for me to hear that sort of stuff because it's like i know how it is because i feel like i'm pretty pretty much the same exact way and um you know i don't think it's fair to you know i don't think it's fair to you i don't think it's fair to frankly anybody just because it's like you know you want you want people to focus on what you do as a musician and obviously like if you extend your gratitude as like as a person i think that that is just you know obviously going above and beyond you know i think a, i think a good example of that um at least from my knowledge of things is like uh silent from uh garrett from silent planet i know he's like and i just saw them recently and he had he had um on the tour he had like he's like i'm not really like a talky person he's like i don't really come up here to like just talk on stage for an extended period of time like you know people come here to see us play um so i want to do that but he was talking about like you know like how people i guess people's perception of him as an artist um and how you know him as a person kind of got clouded together and so people would like you know obviously ask him about like personal stuff and like situations in their lives um and for them and for him to like obviously give advice about it but i also in obviously in his words he was saying like that you know his friends would tell him stuff and he wouldn't even take the advice of them basically and i just thought that was very like interesting to see like you know that I mean, at the end of the day, we're all human. We all have our issues and stuff. But I think it's, I think it takes a lot of guts and courage to just like come out and be like, you know, like, shit sucks sometimes. But like, you know, also, 
you know, for the people to be like more open and transparent and be like, you know, I'm going through some stuff, but like also, you know, I'm here to listen to what other people are going through to, you know, hopefully give them some maybe wisdom or like, you know, some stuff. And, you know, I, I do hope that people don't take advantage of you in the future. It's just, it, it, you know, obviously I just wanted to talk, go on like a little rant about it, but, um, yeah, that's it, it's not, I don't think it's good healthy for both parties, you know what I mean? Yeah, man, because uh with my last release before growing up, Funeral Fantasy, mm-hmm. I basically touched base on with some of the songs on accountability, just you know, um ba- basically like my song Hanse, which is about self-growth and just uh when I went on my hiatus, I basically just went on a self-discovery um episode and just look deep within went through my entire life just you know focused on everything just uh you know the good the bad my stupid mistakes that i made as a kid or as a teen or mm-hmm. even as an adult and it's just like what i realized is nobody's perfect and we're kind of living in an age where everyone expects you to be perfect and especially if you're someone who um has any sort of notoriety but it's just like obviously we're all human yeah and all we can basically just do is grow and even just just in general just growing and it's definitely been been an uh, eye-opening experience to you know come back to it and just realize you know that um i'm not shit like it's just i i was the flavor of the month for a lot of people and it's just um like coming back into it and meeting new people befriending new people and thankfully just being able to work with all these incredible artists that i've worked with so far and all these awesome producers has just been so fucking like humbling for me and i definitely can't wait for the future and i'm definitely going in with a more reclusive tone when it comes to the fan base just sure you know, yeah like just uh like i'll be transparent and just open you know in posts just telling them how much i appreciate them you know for streaming my music or doing anything but it's just yeah. like when it comes to you know being extremely like personal you know like if they want to hit me up you know and talk about their lives they can do so just knowing that i'm not going to be available all the time and sometimes my life you know can get overwhelming and sometimes i need a break from all that stuff and it's just um just no them knowing that you know and not expecting much like too much um will definitely be a lot more better for the future oh i agree i also feel like you know uh, you know a lot of people do this sort of thing where you know a lot of stuff you know people don't, i don't i feel like people like you were saying kind of take advantage of the whole situation and you know they don't really think about the other person on the receiving end of it you know where you know, at the end of the day, you're a human, like, you obviously have your stuff that you deal with on a daily basis, and, um, you know, I can say the same thing about for what I do, you know, obviously, I try to be there for everybody and try to answer, you know, messages, you know, as frequently as I possibly can, but, you know, sometimes it's, sometimes I've got my own shit that I have to deal with, and, you know, I, I I feel like, I feel like, at least for my fans, I feel like people respect me on that front, like, you know what I mean, like, I I feel like I'm open enough with, like, if I'm going through something that I feel like people are, like, you know, appreciative of, you know, people being that, and I also just feel like nowadays, like, it's a lot easier for people to be more open about, you know, like, shit they're going through and stuff, because I, I, you know, I think at the end of the day, it's something that everybody can kind of assimilate with, where it's just, like, you know uh you're like human at the end of the day and i always think it's hilarious that like i'll have some people come out to me like that recognize me and they're just like oh i just expected you to be like a dick and i was just like you know honestly that's like i feel like that's like just a misnomer for like a lot of people you know like you you meet like somebody you know you just meet somebody at the wrong time like if there's like a band that you love and there's like maybe like you know you have a certain member of that band that you like really you know care a lot about and you like go to meet them and they're like kind of like an asshole and then you're like oh man like that guy was a dick like I wasn't expecting him to be that way and I don't know I always think to myself like you know whenever I meet somebody like if they're not if they're not like super hyped like the first time 
it's probably because they're do like they have something they got a lot on their plate you know what i mean and so i don't always like just immediately judge someone based off of just like the initial thing that happens like you know i i feel like people go through a lot of stuff and you know who am i to just be like immediately judge them about stuff i guess exactly so but we're gonna get into some more lighthearted stuff um obviously you have some new music coming out um and you kind of talked about like some of the influences you draw from and just trying to have fun so like you know what i guess what in your mind was like i need to you know have fun with it this time around like i said you had rebooted it a couple times and just what was like what was it like when you were away from like all the social media that you're like you know if i'm coming back to music like i want to be able to enjoy it or was it just something like in your life where you're like everything in my life is going super well and i want to carry like that positivity through uh doing the music yeah <laughs> so it's kind of both um the first uh thing that you mentioned was just you know i just needed i, I got really tired of hearing all these uh like all these artists like who have so much potential just going for the same thing over and over and over again and it's just very very like lackluster yeah and i definitely didn't uh, i just didn't find any passion from that anymore when i got into this sort of scene doing you know like the emo alt pop rock hip-hop stuff um mm -hmm. was when i was friends with astari at the time and he introduced me to nothing nowhere to all these different artists like ta like just finding artists on his uh youtube channel like tag shay um kid boo at the time mm -hmm. um it really inspired me to you know it, it was a new it was very fresh it was new and it's just uh something that i resonated with and found very intriguing mixing the best of both worlds but now it's gotten to a point where um it's basically an oversaturated genre just like how metalcore and post hardcore and all oh, yeah gen have gone the same way and it will happen and there will be amazing artists who excel at doing these styles but mm -hmm. i've always wanted to try something new and i did try to do that with the song um cover that i did for uh the hunter hunter 1999 opening the second one called yeah um, that was tight sun, yeah yeah the sun also shines at night and uh, while it didn't pan out as much it didn't you know receive um as much praise as my old stuff sure it, def it was definitely fun to do but i realized i had to take it down a notch and just focus on original content but since i don't have uh while i do have a japanese fan base i should try to you know appease um everyone like not just try to you know uh reach to one um demographic sure and yeah. while not you know losing sight of what i want to do and that way I, I it was basically out of like just pure luck um going on youtube and just looking up songs and i found my homie Vito, and he basically just he, he's incredible with his voice and i had to hit him up and see if he wanted to collaborate and I sent him this song, which turned out to be the instrumental for growing up. And mm -hmm. he, you know, took charge and him and Ultra basically just, you know, went in the studio, tracked down some vocals. And it sounded very, very reminiscent to what I've from where, you know, my roots, my origins, mm -hmm. you know, the yeah. MySpace age back when scene kids and deathcore kids and all that stuff um was the thing the end thing and after that it's basically you know i was i pretty much just said to myself i found you know what i want to do i just i don't want to make you know the same music over and over again i want to do stuff that's more experimental maybe experiment with anime and just uh metalcore deathcore because while there are some artists that do use those, you know, um, those influences, yeah, they are not necessarily the best when it comes to it because they don't use the proper vocal skirt like techniques or sure, yeah, or they just you know they're they're very new to it because you do have some artists who just blow up but they've never even played a show before. Like um, I have a few homies who are like that, but they they kill it. They you know when it comes to the music, they're incredible. 
but they're still just kids you know they're still starting out yeah and they don't have the experience of you know having been you know having lived through the myspace era yeah (laughs) so yeah so basically that's what i'm trying to go for is just mixing uh you know what i find fun what i find passion in and what basically brought like my roots what brought me into the music Mm -hmm. and what i started with mixing that with what i'm interested in anime video games you know just making music that's both catchy but also not necessarily something that's cliche or generic yeah no i like this stu- the stuff that you've sent over to me because i know anytime you release something I, I always have to give it a check out at the very least um but i was checking out some of the stuff like this hunter hunter like song you did and i was just like i was like wow this is like i, I mean i don't think i've i've told you this but i like listened to it and i was like wow this is a lot different than what i was expecting like i mean i felt like i was like he was gonna do something anime related like it was just a matter of time but i was like really surprised at like how good it came out because i was just like this is quite a genre change from like you know obviously doing like you know stuff comparable to like nothing nowhere where like the emo rap stuff but i'm just really stoked if anything that you know you're doing something that you love doing like something that you get behind something you're passionate about because you know that's what i'm about here you know obviously i do this because i'm passionate about doing it um and so i always love i I mean not to say that your stuff beforehand wasn't you know stuff that i didn't believe in but i felt like at this point in time like listening to the covers like listening to some of the more original stuff uh because i did check out like ultra stuff and saw some like you know collab stuff that you guys did um or just like little things um i was like yeah this just feel like it just feels like th- there's like a new waste like it's not like oh okay we're gonna like reboot it and then like see what happens i just feel like you have a new energy to it a new vibe and you know i'm just glad you've you know got the confidence and the ability to do it because like again you've been a fan and like a friend for a long time so it's good to see that you got that you're finally like finding the right people to work with and like you know coming up with some really good stuff because it is really it's really cool to see the progression because i was like trying to think the other day i was like i was like i wonder how long we've been friends for because i was like that was like the one thing i was thinking about i was like i know we've been friends for like a good bit but i couldn't really like nail down like a specific thing of like when we like actually like started talking and stuff like that but uh you know dude i'm always i'm always about supporting what you do and i'm glad that you know you finally have something that you are like 120 percent like in like obviously not to say that waste prior to this wasn't but it just there's just a different energy about it this time around at least i think so yeah thanks boss and yeah like um the old stuff while it was fun it was basically um it was in the uh when the oversaturation and the cookie cutter was giving birth yeah i would say but at the same time they are songs that i did have fun tracking though there are a couple where it's just while i had fun that it was also there was also pressure on that since in order to remain relevant you had i like i had to you know continue releasing music oh yeah it was just very uh taxing on me just coming up with all these songs especially since i came into this not even being a singer i was more of a screamer and yeah i've always been more confident in that just doing gutturals doing highs lows uh tunnel throw all that stuff and this is just new territory for me and just knowing you know that there are people who enjoy my voice just me singing in general was Mm -hmm. just like it, it took me by surprise but i am extremely grateful about it that's awesome well the next question ways uh we've kind of beat it around the bush a little bit but i guess like you were talking about a lot of like the myspace era bands so i guess like who i i guess like who in the past are you drawing from now and then like obviously like more currently who who has inspired you to like you know take on this new this new musical task i guess back in the myspace era there were a lot of bands that i listened to that 
definitely influenced me. I remember being influenced when it came to my screaming was uh, by Waking the Cadaver and Ooh, Well. Yeah. Um, let's see who else. Uh, some local bands like We're Not Friends Anymore. Uh, let's see. Um, obviously, Whitechapel's yeah. Phil Bozeman. Phil Bozeman, Su- yeah. yeah. Suffocate. And when it came to the metalcore, post-hardcore stuff, Silverstein, and Mm -hmm. they were just all these bands. I used to um, just spend most of my, uh, like, my teenage years just scouring MySpace, looking for all these bands, just downloading their music using the, uh, I think it was (laughs) file2hd.com. Yeah, I know that. Or blog spots like oh, uh, yeah. Gut Core, Total Death Core, and making a few friends on there like uh, my homie Squidos. Shout out to him for <laughs> helping me find computers all the time. Um, <laughs> and just it, just in general, all that, um, all those bands, all that music that I found just really resonated with me. Jerome, um, Kill Whitney Dead, all the Ooh. all these bands and now with uh, the current influences that i have i would say are definitely more of um it's kind of split you have yoko shimamura nobu yomatsu just all these um composers who make video game music mm-hmm. or just these uh j- just all these artists who do the j-rock j-pop sound yeah but then on the other spectrum you have all these other bands like crystal lake and yeah. Fear and loathing in las vegas yeah and all it just basically all these bands just really really um resonate with me and still to this day and influence me in the music and it's not just that that you know that i'm gonna draw influence from but it's also just stuff that i liked as a kid just um i like sometimes what i'll do is i'll listen to openings from uh you from the 80s 90s or even the 2000s era like uh openings from shaman king uh yeah even like curvy right back at you just <laughs> I, I, tr- I try to find all these americanized anime openings and just you know find it what works for them and what i realized is it, it just focuses on catchiness it's kind of like pop music but yeah more so um just passion and just um not necessarily just drawing from you know what's going to sound good but also what sounds right for that yeah, no, I, I, when you said Kirby right back at you, that got me because, like, I remember growing up as a kid watching that and being, like, super hyped about the intro. Um, there's another one that I'm thinking of that I think is escaping me. I know it was, like, a Sonic TV show. Oh, was uh, it, uh, I think it was, like, Sonic, Sonic X. X. Yeah, yeah, I think it was Sonic X, but that intro gets me, too. Like, I do, like, I, you know, I... I love the anime OSTs. I think they've, you know, I think Japan's always found a unique way of like incorporating like something that's just really good energy to it, but also has like this level of catchiness that I feel like like more bands in the United States have a harder time of getting around to. I mean, obviously, there's a lot of bands that do some catchy stuff, but every time like I listen to like you know an anime ost that's done by like a j-rock band they just have some way of like arranging their music where it's like like even if you're not like a a big fan of it like or you may not even know like the show or whatever you're like i can get down with the song because it just feels there's just something about the feeling that 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 comes out of like a good j-rock track exactly and that while I am going to be doing this stuff, there I'm also going to try to delve into new territory. Just um, sure. kind of mixing in, um, like I would say, the artists that would inspire the uh, experimental tracks would be like Joji, um, Elvis, Depressedly, <laughs> and I, I would also say maybe like um, as yeah, like Billie Eilish stuff. Yeah. Just stuff where uh, they use the pianissimo um, vocal style, where it's just more um light and just you know soft just sort of like a whispering uh style going for that yeah it has more of like it it has more of like a breathiness to it for sure like i'm glad joji i'm glad you mentioned joji because i i feel like i talk about him in a a frequent amount of manner like i mean obviously like everybody know well i don't know if everybody knows him for like doing the youtube stuff but um but yeah no like his music 
currently is really great like i love the new track run obviously it's like not super i mean it's newish um but i just feel like he's he's on that next wave of like doing some really good stuff and like his vocals from like the first record that he did to like run i think he's improved so much as like a vocalist and you know it's a lot to aspire to i feel like considering he did like he had a good voice like and obviously he did a lot of stuff like you know on youtube prior to that but um as like you know under a different name but uh his his vocals now just sound so much better and i i saw um uh he did that like live performance on jimmy jimmy fallon of run and he sounded so great like so i'm i'm really excited i felt like he was pretty nervous in that performance just because like you know it's national tv yeah. um but he he was really he's really working and i'm glad that you know i'm glad that people are getting noticing him as an artist now um just because i feel like you know his that song's awesome and I, i'm hoping he's in the process of writing like an ep or like a full length because and just that whole that whole label itself 88 rising is like really great too so for anybody yeah, listening I, to this I, check it out yeah i love um brian rich he's brian yeah there. yeah he's really great um i was talking to somebody my one of my other homies shouts to nick um he was him and i were talking about this like uh this past weekend and we were like, dude, like August 08 is really great too on that record. I mean, on that label. Um, and yeah, they just really have a lot of really great talent. So if if you guys are listening to it and haven't checked them out, um, definitely go do so. But um, my next question, Waste, you know, I just got to ask the familiar questions. And since you've been on here a good amount of times at this point, I feel like now I'm running out of questions to ask you. Uh but uh what would be somebody now you would want to collaborate with like like have to have on a guest spot or like a producer since obviously like i feel like sonically you've changed since the last time we've chatted obviously and we've talked in multitude about it now but i guess who would be somebody that would be on your list hmm. obviously when it comes to artists um doing a collab whether it be me you know featuring or them featuring mm -hmm. it would have to be posty post malone oh nice yeah. okay yeah or joji or even even like a three like a you know like a collab with both triple of them. collab yeah that would be amazing and when it comes to producer i would have to say definitely nobu yomatsu i would love Ooh. to um since i think it's survived the prophet their vocalist uh was singing on hollow the new uh final fantasy 7 remake song i believe so yeah. yeah yeah like i would love to do a song like that whether it be for a video game movie uh it just if it has nobu yomatsu producing it i, I would love to be on it that's awesome well i i feel like a follow-up question to that obviously you know i'm a, a big video game head um but and i'm gonna switch up the question because i know i've asked you you would you would want to be as like a character but i guess if there was one um if there was one game series you would want to like have a track featured on uh what game series would it be and like if you asked me this question uh like maybe a few years ago i would have said kingdom hearts but judging how kingdom hearts 3 went you know uh <laughs> probably not that one anymore. like don't get me wrong i I've... love the soundtrack but the game itself was oof yeah it, it was definitely oof and i would have to say either final fantasy or um if it was for since it's for a video game yeah either that or tales or one of the tales of games oh nice like the tales of symphonia right yeah, Tales of Symphonia, Legendia, Brazaria. Now they got to make a Tales of Wastia. I know. There you go. That's well. I don't know who. I don't know who produced that, but you sh we should get our boy Waste on it. That'd be very cool. And I just feel like you know, like a lot of bands are delving into that whole like video game like soundtrack thing. Like the one that I can think of most most currently was like Bring Me the Horizon did a track for uh, Death Stranding, which I oh, thought yeah, was very cool. Is and that was cool so i hope that a lot of bands kind of you know maybe take that opportunity to 
you know, delve into that market. Cause I know a lot of like people that are musicians also like video games. So I feel like it's, I think, I feel like it, you know, something like that could definitely be in tandem. Um, but the last thing waste, obviously, uh, I have to ask this. If you were to compile a musical super group, who'd be in your band? Hmm. Uh, definitely. Uh, well, what would it have to be? Uh, can you give me, uh, like some parameters? Kind of yeah. Um, I feel like, well, you're, you're in a unique situation where I feel like, uh, you can have, you could be practically anything, but I, I feel like if we keep it to kind of like, you know, like a four piece, so you have, or a five piece, like you have two guitar players or like any sort of other instrument that like, you know, you could have like a keyboardist or whatever, um, bass player, drummer. And then obviously like if you want to do vocals or if you want to have somebody else fill the vocal role for you. Uh, I would have to say when it comes to guitar, definitely Yvette Young. And Oof. I know we, we've, you've, you've interviewed her and I used to talk yes. to her and she, she's, she's amazing and just, um, incredible. So she would definitely be one of my picks for guitar. Uh, drums, I would have to say either um, Jacob Cavall from uh, Wolf and Bear, just because I've gotten along with him yeah. very well, or um, Alex Rudinger. Oh, yeah. And when it comes to bass, um, I would have to say probably the, the bass player that was in the Faceless. Oh, I, 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 I'll uh, look it up while you... Uh try to is it is it evan evan brewer evan brewer evan, i think yeah. it's evan brewer yeah because i know he had his own his own thing yeah and evan brewer for bass um for second guitar uh i would have to say probably one of the guys from mm, i would have to say one of the guys from era or ne scratch that i would definitely want uh my homie steven from self continuum Ooh. just because i i get along with him pretty well too shout out to steven yeah, and vocal-wise, just, yeah, just me, or maybe just uh, kind of switch off between Yvette and myself. Oh, okay, so, like, Yvette doing the cleans and you doing the screams or... A... Yeah. I feel like Yvette should do the screams, actually. That's, uh, that's what I was really <laughs> hoping that... That was the answer that I was hoping for. So, Yvette, I know you're somewhere out there. You know, uh, Waste would love to have you on to do them, them sick gutturals. So, let's... uh. Let's make it happen. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yvette go, in, go slam. Oh, dude. She she might. I feel like she has the potentiality to do that. <laughs> um, but the, the next question, Waste, uh, I've been asking this for like a lot of repeat people that I've had on. Um, but if there is one album you wish that you wrote, what album would it be? Uh, that's a hard one, but let's uh... Mm, I'd have to say a night at the opera. Ooh, like okay. Because that that's one of the most incredible albums of all time with one of the most prolific rock songs, and honestly, because uh, I remember I know you've asked before um, the question if you could ever tour with a with uh, you know anyone who would uh -huh. you know who would be on the tour, it would definitely have to be Queen in their prime. Oh yeah. That would just be great to see just in general. I feel like any, I feel like if you lived in that era and you didn't see Queen, you know, I feel like you'd be missing out on like, you know, obviously no one can determine what bands would be like a part of history, but like there's just, cer there's just a certain like aura about bands that like obviously have a legendary status to them. So, you know, I, I'm not old enough to have lived through Queen uh, but you know, I would, I, that I would love, that would be like, honestly, that would be one band that I would want to see if they were still around, like not like, obviously they are still alive and there's a good amount of members and they're doing it with other vocalists. But I think Freddie Mercury was like, you know, one of the greatest of all time for sure. So that I can a hundred percent agree with that. But the last thing waste obviously the most important thing tell them about tell the people about where they can find you out in the social media and uh obviously with the whole well you're not doing any of the touring stuff yet but you know with the whole coronavirus thing going on 
Um, you can tell the people what you got going on in the, in the meantime. Yeah. So basically you can find me at, um, it, I'll just, it's easier this way just cause it makes it a lot more simpler sure. to find all my, uh, band camp, YouTube, Spotify, <laughs> Twitter, and everything. I have it all compiled into, um, a hot link. So the hot link is smart URL dot it slash waste music. And there you go. I have everything on there, and as for merch, I'm actually working on that right now, but uh, I'll definitely be mentioning it on my social media sites like Instagram and Twitter, and I'm going to give a quick shout-out to there you go. all the musicians that I've worked with. Uh, so Vito, love you. Ultra, you're like a brother. Um, Casey from Lonely Avenue, thank you for helping me start this. Oof. And, you know, just um, being a pal... Uh, Jay Zala, wherever the wherever the fuck you are, uh, don't know what happened to you, but love you, man. Just keep keep at it, and someday come back. Isaac from Dwellings, you are fucking fantastic, and I'm sad I don't get to see you because of this stupid uh, I know virus. I'm mad um, too. You don't have to yeah. tell me. I wanted to see them because they, not to cut you off, but they were supposed to come out here to uh, New Jersey where I live. Um, they were supposed to play Philly because uh, shout out to Andreas because they're, they're going to be on tour with Andreas and Strawberry Kids, uh, Strawberry Girls, I mean. Um, and obviously with this whole virus thing, we, they postponed the tour. But I would I I would have loved to have them on because I feel like that would have been very tight. I mean, you guys can still come on, but uh, it would have been cool to do it in person. But anyway, waste you can yeah. continue on. <laughs> yeah, and then with uh, Young Scuff. Uh, moonlit yesterday and young Va uh, young van savage gasps love you all of you and a uh, special shout out to my homie brody who produced uh, a couple of my songs and mixed them yeah definitely can't wait to work again and i'm i'm pretty damn sure that he's going to be the one who's going to make me uh the uh more experimental instrumentals there and you go my last shout out will be to IOF who made uh, the growing up metal core instrumentals because without him, honestly, um, it definitely wouldn't have been possible to, you know, uh, befriend Vito and Ultra. It's just mm -hmm. like everything is just kind of just, you know, uh, like the butterfly effect. And I definitely can't wait to work with him some more. There we go. Well, obviously, shout out to Waste, major homie of the channel. Uh, I would say pretty close to day one, or I'd have to say. I know we've been, I know we've been homies for a very long time, and any time that uh, Waste has some new project to work on, I always am down to support this dude because he shows me a lot of love. And you know, I feel like as artists, especially now in this time, like we gotta show everybody some love. So uh, please go support Waste. Uh, I'm really excited to see the next chapter. I mean, obviously, with every iteration that you've done, I feel like I've always been supportive, but this one feels the most, like, genuine. It feels the most, like, passionate that I've seen you, at least currently, and uh, I'm honestly super stoked to see what you have going on next, and um, make sure to go follow this dude on social media. I have a good feeling that things are going to be going well for him in this year despite all the tribulation uh so go check out his stuff and uh make sure to uh go give him you know go give all these other people that i gave a shout out some follows too because you know a lot of people behind the scenes don't get that love too so shout outs to all the people that work behind the scenes and do all this sort of stuff uh you know producers i know they get short staff sometimes so um go give them some love but if you enjoyed this interview uh podcast thingy go give it some love uh share it like it subscribe it goes a hell of a long way and thanks of course to waste as always for coming on and being such a big supporter thanks boss i definitely appreciate it and especially just uh you know making the accommodation to uh do audio you got it man no problem and hopefully next time uh We'll we'll have to do it in person when you when you go on tour. <laughs> Hell yeah, bro! That's that's the plan, man. That's the goal.